you never start a business thinking you're going to fail clearly. But I, I have moments that I wrote in a journal, like, what does it say about me if I fail? Like, I want to be successful. I want to, I want to be meaningful. And, you know, I started to recognize, like, once you get through that, you start to recognize that isn't where your meaning comes from. And even if I fail tomorrow, this business failed tomorrow, I would be okay. What do you do if, if, if that ever happens and you guys are in a pretty good spot, so you're going to have a, you got a really good run ahead of here. Um, you got new office space that you're talking about being in, you're pumped and excited. Doesn't matter that jacket you're wearing and the, and the shirt pulled halfway open and you got the hat on doesn't matter. I just, I know that that passion, the drive you've got, you guys are going to go on a run here. And so, but, um, if it all ended tomorrow, what's chase do on Saturday morning? So if it's over, what do you do? I think take a pause and wait and see what I'm I'm supposed to do next. I, I think I would I, I think I would go, all right, I'm grateful for what I got to do with this business. You know, I'm not I, I don't want to act like I I wouldn't be upset. But my that's really also not my personality. I'm very much a okay next. Um and I would I wouldn't rush into anything, but I just know the way that I'm wired. A new idea would come up or, you know, the thing that I'm great for, I grew up with, with working class parents. And, you know, I remember my dad worked since he was 18 in a paper mill and the paper mill went bankrupt. OK, and took all of my dad's retirement uh, that he had saved. You know, he didn't go to college. He's worked his butt off, actually made a lot of money, like for a factory worker, like he busted his butt and the company took everything. And I'll never forget the next day. My dad got in his pickup truck and he and my mom, I remember my mom saying like, it's going to be fine. She's like, you've got a lot of things that you can do. You just need to get busy doing them. My dad got in his pickup truck the next day and started doing roofs, right? He started roofing people's houses and he did odd jobs here and there. We never lost our house. And thank God, like not everybody's that fortunate, but uh, started, he, he, he started using his hands and he got to work. And he kept marching and then, you know what? He picked, he strapped his boots on, he went back to work and he ended up getting another job eventually. And so I just, I'm grateful for that kind of upbringing because I was raised to believe like, it's never over, right? So if I had to go get another job to survive, okay, no big deal. There's other things I can so, do. And I'm sure a new so idea we, would come to me eventually. So we talked about nine to five. I don't know of him working in the mill I don't know if it was a nine to five job. I don't know. I'm assuming he probably put some extra hours in, but yeah. um, what do you think? Cause that's where I came from too. I came from a blue collar family and, um, and not, not wealthy at all. Some massive struggles growing up financially. And um, yeah. I actually benefit from those now, right? The mindset. And so what does someone do if they find themselves in the nine to five job? Do you have the, the knowledge, the thought process, the expertise, the perspective to share? Like, what do you do if you want more out of life, but you're in this nine to five job? Yeah, you know, I think that, I think the first thing that, that's really important um, for people to do, and I, I, I don't know the best way to do this, but I think a lot of people don't really recognize what it is that they want. And I've recognized that at, at times that, that I didn't actually know what I want. So, you know, I've, 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 I've often heard this this idea right that if you know what you want and you don't have it people are so resourceful and hardworking and you know and smart and gritty however you want to look at tenacious however you want to look at it if you don't have it there's a chance that you don't really want it or um it's not that important to you like i remember at times you know when i used to i used to kind of idolize money uh, when I was a lot younger, I thought that was kind of the pinnacle of success. I do not believe that anymore. I think money's a great tool, but I know a lot of people that have a great deal of money and are very, very miserable. And I don't want to live miserably. Like I'm, you know, I'm an Enneagram seven. I want to, I want to be free and be joyful and, uh, and not be shackled by anything. And so, which isn't always, you know, a great quality, but I, I used to be like, man, I'm really bummed because I don't make enough money. Well, you know what I recognized? Like I had a lot of opportunities to take jobs where I made, would have made a ton of money. 
like sales jobs for medical device companies and things. And it didn't fit my passion. And so what was funny is I was judging myself against this belief that I wanted something and I just was not good enough to get it or was behind. But what I recognized is family, freedom, creativity, those things were far more important to me than money. And by the way, look back at all the things that I had done, it all those that, that all added up. It's like I had turned down opportunities to make more money. And so once I settled into that, it's like, okay, wow, what is it that I do want? So I think that's step one. Like, what is it that you really want? Step two, what's the smallest thing you could do today? And this is tough for people. And I recognize this because for me, I don't do small steps. I do big steps. So, but small steps are very easy, but it's like, what's the one thing you could do today that could help push you in the direction of discovering what it is that you want? I, I am so insanely fortunate that I know what my passion is and I've known since I was four years old and I'm, I'm fortunate that I get to do it, right? But like, cause some people it's like, man, well, my passion was basketball. Like I didn't get to be in the NBA. Okay. There are so many jobs in, in athletics. Like if you're truly passionate about basketball, like you watch the, uh, the air movie. I don't know if you've mm -hmm. seen that awesome. about Michael I took, Jordan. I, I, took, I took our whole company. I took our whole company to it, man. I reserved the theater. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, look at him, look at that character. Who's, you know, Matt Damon's character. Who's like, not doesn't really fit in any of these places and gets in a shoe company. Like you hear about that stuff all the time. So I think those are two really important things. It's like, what's the one thing, what do you want? What do you deeply, what do you really care about? Sometimes that, that process is best found through journaling. Maybe if you're taking some time, ask people that, that you love and trust and you know want the best for you. Um, and then I think second step is what's the smallest thing you could do today to move yourself in a direction to align you with some of those values or some of those opportunities like crap maybe it's the smallest thing like i i believe that god puts stuff in front of us in miraculous ways so like you know if you if you're not there or you're like man i don't believe in god i'm like cool no problem um but who knows you want to call it the universe i don't care what you call it but amazing things happen when you put yourself in a position to to latch on to those those moments so you know you don't get to win the race if you're not in it so if basketball is your passion, how can you get yourself closer to basketball today? Yeah.